What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing uh, intubation, somebody who has potential cervical spine injury, right? And oftentimes when you get to the scene, either BLS or the firefighters, they may elect to put a C collar on the patient, right? Because they're worried about potential cervical injury, right? So those patients who have cervical spine injury, we cannot place them in ear to the sternal notch position. Remember how I was showing you with like, they had like this, right? Actually, come, come over here, right? If I was like, imagine this is roses, right? Stay like this one. This is roses and you're gonna snip the roses, snip the roses without moving, yeah, okay? Just moving, exactly. So ear to the sternal notch and the way we do it, we do padding, right? If we did this for him and he has a cervical spine injury, right? We now potentially cause damage or harm to him, right? He's got like a C3, C4 injury, right? We don't wanna have him uh, be paralyzed, right? Or impair his, uh, you know, phrenic and then diaphragm, right? Uh, phrenic nerve and then die from the respiratory functions, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to intubate somebody with the position where they're lying flat. You cannot align the oral axis, laryngeal axis, and the pharyngeal axis in the mouth to get optimal view, you cannot. So this is why I'm gonna use a bougie, right? You must have a bougie. Usually when they advocate this procedure, they say what you wanna have is video laryngoscopy. So video, like remember in the similar with the video laryngoscope? And then the other one was a bougie. So since we don't have, uh, video, we're going to use direct visualization. So this is going to be DL called direct laryngoscopy, right? You're going to get a bougie. Uh, and then this is going to be employed. This is called the coday tip, right? The coday tip. So this tip, right? And I know some of the uh, videos or some of the instructors will say, well, you want to feel the rings, right? Truly speaking, the best uh, um, landmark to know that you're in the right place, you're gonna get hold up. This is not gonna advance because you're gonna hit right main stem, it's gonna stop. If I was in the esophagus, this will gonna go down all the way, right? So hold up is the best marker. And then we're gonna lace the, the tube over it, right? So here, I, this is straight to cuff, but we're actually not gonna use the stylet. We're gonna basically use this to railroad it over kind of, right? One trick that you wanna do is this, right? So uh, there was a, can you bring me that mannequin cut out over there? So you see how the bevel of the tube, right, is pointed sideways, right? So when I'm here, right, so when I'm here, the tendency you see of this bevel is to get caught right there when I'm putting it in. So if this were to occur and this bevel is to get caught, you're gonna rotate the tube, you're gonna rotate the tube, right, uh, counterclockwise like this. So the bevel goes up and then you'll be able to advance. Everybody see that? So if you're feeling hold, like it's not going through, Right, pull back, rotate, and then it's gonna advance forward. Right, this is what usually happens, right? Uh, so hopefully hopefully that was clear, right? How we're gonna do this procedure is as follows, right? We're gonna have one person who is gonna be my partner and they're gonna perform what's called the ear muff technique. What this means is that once we open the collar and we need to open it so that the joy becomes mobile, the mandible becomes mobile, the person who is gonna be the partner, they're going to grab the ears and their job is essentially not to allow the head to lift off the stretcher or wherever the patient is laying on the floor, right? Your job is to hold the ears so the head does not move up. Everybody follow? All right, so this is what we're gonna do. So who's gonna be my partner? James, you come come this way, so you got room, right? So we, we're gonna say in the initial phase, right? We already did our assessment. We determined the patient meets the criteria for intubation, right? Which are the indications. Failure to protect or maintain airway. Failure to ventilate or oxygenate and then they expect the clinical courses to decline, right? Like some examples would be like, maybe they have airway burns. So we decided to intubate them early, right? And we suspect cervical spine injury. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, James, take, take over C-spine with earmuff technique and I'm gonna open the collar. So go ahead, put your hands this way, this way, come, come this way. Yeah, because I need this space. I'm gonna open the collar, but I'm not gonna take this off. I'm gonna just leave it uh, hanging like this, right? So now uh, your job is basically holding the head so that I'm, I'm unable to lift the head with the laryngoscope up off the stretcher. Everybody see that? Uh, and just uh, this forearm, I need this mandible to be mobile. Very good, right? And then what we're gonna do is, uh, Rita, you're gonna be my another partner. You're gonna come, on, come here, right? And you got the, right, the laryngus, uh, sorry, you got the ET tube, and you're gonna uh, put the, right, syringe, excellent, right? So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I showed you, right? Actually, let me get, um, let's, no, it was a number three here somewhere. I think a three. Yeah. 
right? So what you're gonna do is middle finger, right? Uh, mag uh, maxilla, and then thumb the mandible, cross finger technique, right? Um, this, this technique opens the mouth, right? So here and here, I open the mouth. And then I'm gonna come from the side and my goal is basically just to start to inch. And what I'm looking for is I wanna just see, right? The sliver of the apoglottis. When I see it, I'm gonna insert into the molecular space. Right, and I'm not gonna get an optimal view. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to do that just yet. Yeah, we're gonna do this once it's inside. Right, I'm gonna show you. Right, you wanna be careful. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna. In a, I'm gonna go specifically go into the esophagus. Right, so this can go all the way down. Right, but what we wanna do? We said we wanted to be right in the trachea, and we're gonna get hold up. How do I know I have hold up? It's not letting me advance any further. So I got hold up here. It's not letting me go forward. And then my partner is gonna go ahead and introduce the ET2. Yeah, keep going. And then at this point, I'm gonna grab over. I meet resistance, right? Uh, hold the top of the bougie. I'm gonna rotate it and I'm gonna advance it forward. Once I see it go past, right, my vocal cords, I'm gonna go ahead and inflate the, the yeah, go ahead. That's all right. So I see it, it's, I saw it go through, right? And now what I'm gonna do is when I take out my bougie, I'm gonna do it anatomically towards the feet, right? And what you need to put is the, Capnography, right? It might be in the ET, in, in the ET tube kit, right? If it's not in this one, it might be in the one on the on, oh, over there. We'll start here, just to get, right. get a breath in, you know, it's important. Right. So the reason why I keep my blade in is I want to make sure, right? When I pulled out the bougie, I did not pull out the tube with it, right? So I see it's in, right? What I do is I hold it, I'm gonna note it's uh, barking, right? So this is for, this should be uh, three times the diameter. This is a little too shallow for this person, right? Uh, this was 8.5, right? So I would want it go deeper, right? So maybe 22, 21, 22 at the lip line, right? And then what I'm gonna do is uh, once he starts to ventilate, I wanna first, right, get my objective data, 45, 35, right? Or whatever the number may be, maybe it's low, right? but this is my objective data, right? And as, let me just, you see, right? You see expansion, so I'm using my, so you have your stethoscope leader, right? Where's the best place to auscultate? The stomach. And not the stomach. I never auscultate the stomach, you know why? why? Because I saw it go through the vocal cords. Oh. So what, where's the best places to auscultate? Mid-auxiliary, mid mid-auxiliary. Why is this mid-auxiliary important? Because of the location? Huh? Uh, so it's, it's not per se of the flesh. Uh, what is what if I put it too deep? I put the let's, let's say at twenty seven mark centimeters at twenty seven. What do you think is going to happen? It went to the right. It Excellent, James. Right, James says right. So if I'm going to listen to the right side, I'm going to have positive lung sounds. I listen to the left, I'm going to have negative lung sounds or no sounds. Right? Should I be doing right away needle decompression? No. No. Right. You should uh, be pulling back, pulling back on it. three times the diameter of the tube. Right. So very good. So auscultate, this is my subjective data. And then I'm gonna look at my pulse ox, right? I wanted to read as high as possible or whatever the number may be, right? So uh, the objective data is entitled CO2 and pulse ox. Subjective data is what? You seeing it go through the vocal cords and auscultation of the lung sounds, right? But once we have established this, right? So you go ahead and uh, ventilate it, right? And I'm gonna take this from you. This is the bite block. James, you're still holding, you're still holding. And I'm not going, I'm not letting go. So this is the bite block. One thing I see you guys doing, you guys placing it like this. Don't place it like that. Why? Because if I want a suction, I want this opening be towards the feet. Why well, do I don't want it towards the feet? Because then I could put a yank hour if I need to open the mouth. Right? Make sense? So the bite block, right? Is there? We're gonna put this behind his neck. And don't uh, do the don't do this first. We wanna get the Velcro going. Because if I do this and then I start to adjust the Velcro, I'm gonna have problems, right? I may pull it to the left or to the right. So the Velcros um, is the first thing to be secured. It's going to be behind the collar? Yeah. And then I wanna make sure, right, my Velcro is completely secured, James, you just doing a good job, right? Mm -hmm. Then this is the last thing, the bolt is the last thing, right? Once I secure it, I verify, right? 
my long sounds, I verify my anti-idle CO2, I verify my uh, pulse oximeter, right? Once all this is done, right? My tube is verified, I'm gonna say, all right, now it's time to resecure my collar, right? So now once the color is as good, James, you can let go, right? So uh, just, just slightly, let me put it a little. So once the color is on, then you could let go. To be honest with you, when, when we do cardiac arrest management in the field, right? Even if they don't have cervical spine injury, once I intubate, I put a color on them. Do you know why? Because you don't want the neck to move and the, and the tool to be uh, displaced. Displaced, excellent, right? And then what I do is, right, let's say we noted, let's say it was 2021 at the lip line. When the firefighter's recover brings the patient down, right? I wanna, I look again, where's my lip line? And then I recheck all the objective data. Entitled CO2, pulse oximeter, lung sounds, everything. I recheck everything. The moment one thing doesn't look good, the moment one thing doesn't look good, I gotta go back and verify if everything is the right place. I would get a C, uh, uh, somebody holding the C-spine, open this up, get my laryngoscope in, make sure it's in the right place. So I verify before I start my transport. You wanna make sure everything is in place, right? You guys have any questions about anything? Right, clear, right? So his, his job, you saw, right? Holding the earmuff technique, he doesn't let go until the collar is back on, right? If you, uh, we, I kind of did the procedure quite fast, right? Uh, I just wanna show you something while we're here, you could keep recording, right? If we needed to pre-oxygenate the patient, uh, I said like we started this off already intubating. This is gonna be quite difficult to do. Right, so the technique, right, for pre-oxygenation, remember I was showing you the triple airway usually, but we, can we do this? We cannot because the cervical is fine, right? So we can only do the jaw lift. So I'm gonna show you a technique, right? So the technique is this, right, Con connect the BVM. So uh, if I was gonna pre-oxygenate, I'm gonna say squeeze on six, right? And you're gonna see what I'm gonna do. Two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six. Two, one thousand, three, one thousand. 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, right? So you notice on 5, I engage. On 5, I engage. On 6, he squeezes, then I re relax. Because if you keep this position, your your fingers are going to tire, right? Yeah, yeah, you're not going to, so you relax. Why do I start counting at 2? Because the breath is delivered over a second, right? So 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, Two, one thousand, three, one thousand. So breath is delivered over a second, so I don't count one. On five, you engage. On six, he delivers the breath. I would do this to pre-oxygenate my patient before I intubate if I needed to, right, to get the sets up and I have the time frame to do it. Do I need someone doing the earmuff right now? No, I'm, I'm here. I am stabilizing. I'm engaging. But the moment we pre-oxygenate it and everything is set up, then I'll say, okay, James, come over here, right, grab the ears, right, and then we go with our procedure forward. Right. So actually start the procedure this way so that you have uh, practice with that. Uh, and then we're gonna intubate. So start with pre-oxygenation first, and then we're gonna do the earmuff, intubate, secure, verify. Gotcha. Okay. All right.